Uh, so the next one, is this already in standard form? Good, yes, I don't need to do any kind of funny business getting it in, it's already in standard form, so therefore I immediately want to identify my A, B, and my center. So my center is, remember, H is always with X, K is always with Y. Don't make the mistake in saying the center is 3, negative 2, right? Don't want to make that mistake. It's a very common mistake. I made it too, but don't want to make that mistake. So the center is negative 2, positive 3, right? It's x minus h, y minus k, right? Look at the formulas. It's over there. So um, we want to make sure we know that center. Now remember, it's always a squared minus b squared, right? It's L, a squared is no longer the larger number. a squared is not 9 in this problem. a squared is 4 in this problem. b squared is 9 in this problem. It's a very big distinction. If this was a plus, then that would be an ellipse, and that would be a squared. Right? It's not a plus, and it's not an ellipse. It's a hyperbola. So our standard form is our a squared minus our b squared as our denominators. So that allows me to identify a is 2, b is 3, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Therefore, that's going to be 13 equals c squared. So c equals the square root of 13. All right. Um, so now with that information, oh, did I like, I didn't find, I didn't label what the foci and all that kind of stuff were in the last problem, did I? I just like graphed it. All right, well, let's make sure we know how to sketch all that. It was pretty easy, right? That last example, like as far as identifying the values, but let's make sure we label our foci and our vertices for this case. So our center's at negative two, three, so let's go ahead and graph that. So in this case, our center's at negative two, one, two, three. There's our center. Since our A is under the Y, my transverse axis, where my vertices and my foci lie, are now going to be vertical, right? Make sure because A squared's under your Y, now you're going to have vertical. So I'm actually going to put the C right here. And sometimes, guys, if you, sometimes it's helpful just to kind of put like a dashed line there just to remind yourself that's my transverse axis. That's where my vertices and foci are going to lie, OK? So um, let's see, we find A, which is the distance from my, center, from my center to my vertices. Well, again, since they have to be on the transverse axis, that's going to be going up to and down to. Vertice, vertice. Now let's go and label these. So if my center is at negative 2, 3, then my vertices are going to be at negative 2, comma 3, plus or minus 2 which I won't be lazy. I'll actually write them out. 2 plus 3 is 5. And negative 2 um, plus 1. All right, plus 1, positive 1. All right? But you're going up and down, too. Uh, C is going to be square root of 13. So the foci is the same kind of type. But now we're basically adding the square root of 13. Now, mathematically, that's not going to be as fun. So I will leave that as negative 2 comma 3 plus or minus the square root of 13. But remember, guys, that foci, and again, square root of 13 is between what, 3 and 4, right? Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, so square root of 13 is going to be some decimal between 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, so I can just like estimate the foci to be right there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, I'm not really concerned about your graphing ability. Okay, I'm just using the graphing for like the visual representation. Um, and then I'm not going to find the covertices, but we want to find the asymptotes. Since this is a vertical transverse axis, my equation is y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. Well, guys, if we look at this, y equals a over b, so that's going to be plus or minus. 2 thirds times x plus 2 plus 3. Now, I could simplify this into standard form and be a little bit easier to graph. Um, however, you guys, if you guys look at the math for this one, it's still not going to be like the most easiest graph, like it, but you guys at least should understand that it's a line. Um, and again, usually what I like to do is just kind of identify the co-vertices and just kind of create my graph. But let's just go and sketch the graph rather than trying to focus on graphing the asymptotes. 
You guys understand the box method. That's like a little trick if you ever have to graph it, which I'm not going to be concerned about. So, but let's just know that the asymptotes go through. You guys can see that the slope is 2 thirds, so they go through here. So that'd be up 2 over 3, 1, 2, 3. Up 2 over 3, 1, 2, 3. And therefore, it would look something like this. It's a rough to sketch. But the main important thing, guys, you can identify the center or the vertices, the center, the foci, and the asymptotes. And then sketching is just a visual representation. Yes? How did you make all those A squared? Formulas. A squared minus B squared. A squared minus B squared. It's no longer a squared is always larger than b squared like an ellipse. So you got to kind of erase that when looking at a hyperbola. And again, how do we know so far what has been the major difference in a hyperbola and an ellipse from an equation in standard form? That little negative sign, right? When you're dealing with the negative sign, you know that, oh, OK, I'm working with a hyperbola. Okay.